again, Ruby, Sigrid and Agnes. Well, it's late this evening. It's nearly Grandma's bedtime and I think you'll be in bed. But I thought before I went to bed that I might read you the first chapter in the next book of Sophie. Sophie hits six. Not sure what it's about yet, but we'll find out. And here's a lovely picture to start off the book of Sophie's family admiring the new kittens. If you remember, Sophie's cat, Tom, had had four little kittens. This chapter's called Tomboy. One thing's for certain, says Sophie's father. You can't call him her Tom anymore. Tom was Sophie's black cat, who had come from nowhere and adopted her, and had now, much to everyone's surprise, given birth to four little kittens. Female cats are called queens, said Sophie's mother. You should call her Queenie. But I don't like that, said Sophie. How about Elizabeth, said Matthew, who was eight, two and a half years older than Sophie and ten minutes older than his twin brother Mark. Why Elizabeth? Well, it's the Queen's name. Or Anne, said Mark. Why? That's what the Queen's daughter is called. The twins were quite taken with this idea of royalty. As often happened, they had the same thought at the same moment and they looked at one another and grinned and said, how about Fergie? Spelt F-U-R-G-I, said Sophie's father. And everyone laughed, except Sophie. You're all mouldy, stupid and acid, she said. Her favourite phrase, if you remember, when she wasn't happy with someone. And she stumped off hands ran deep into the pockets of her old jeans with a frown of disapproval on her round face. She plodded up to the attic at the top of the house, where all the animals of a toy farm were laid out. Here, in the depths of an old armchair, lay her cat, nursing the four kittens. One tabby, one tortoiseshell, one black with a white bib and white feet, and one exactly like its mother, whose black coat Sophie now stroked. And there they are, sat with their mother on the chair. I can't call you Tom anymore, she said to the cat, because you're not one, are you, my dear? Meow, said the cat. Well, that's how it sounded to Sophie. I suppose I could call you Thomasina, but I don't much fancy that, do you? Meow. Mummy and Daddy and the twins weren't any help. Sophie rubbed the tip of her nose, a sure sign that she was thinking deeply. I wish Aunt Al were here, she said. I bet she'd have a good idea. Aunt Al was Sophie's father's great aunt, if you remember, and therefore Sophie's great great aunt. When she had first been told this, she imagined Aunt Al was enormous, but actually Aunt Al was very small with thin legs like a bird. She was nearly 82 years old and she lived in the highlands of Scotland. She and Sophie had become great friends. Sophie sat on the arm of the old chair, stroking her nameless cat and wondering whether to write a letter to Aunt Al. Trouble is, she said, I'd have to have help with the spelling and everything and anyway it would take all such a long time. Just then she heard a telephone ring downstairs and she jumped up, grinning. Yes, said Sophie, that's it, I'll ring her. Something tells Sophie it might be best to say nothing to the others about this phone call. It could perhaps be rather expensive to telephone the Highlands because they were so high. If they ask me, she thought, I'll tell them I did it. Sophie disapproved of lying. But if they don't ask, then I won't say anything. So she waited that afternoon, a fine Saturday afternoon in early May, until her brothers had gone off to play football, of which they never got tired, with some friends, and her mother had gone to do some shopping and her father was working in the garden. Sophie found Aunt Al's number in the phone book and carefully pressed the buttons. She heard a ringing tone and then Aunt Al's brisk voice as loud and clear as if she were in the room saying, hello, who is it? It's Sophie. Sophie, my niece. Great, great niece, Aunt Al. Great, great aunt to you. How nice to hear your voice, Sophie. Are you okay? Is anything the matter? Yes, there is. 
Nobody ill or anything, I hope, said Aunt Sally. No, it's my cat. Tom? Yes. Well, no. You see, it's not Tom anymore because she's had four babies. Phew, said Aunt Al, surprise, surprise. <clears throat> and so she's got to have a new name, said Sophie. And I can't think of a good one. That's why I'm ringing you up, to ask if you can help me. Right, said Aunt Al. Give me a minute to have a think. Sophie waited. Imagining, as she always did, Aunt Al sitting on top of a mountain somewhere, surrounded by golden eagles, <coughs> In a minute, her voice would come whizzing down the telephone wires, down the mountainside, off the edge of the highlands, out of Scotland, and all the way down, nearly to the bottom of England, all in a fraction of a second. Tomboy, said Aunt Al. What? said Sophie. That's even worse than plain Tom. No, it's not. Don't you know what a tomboy is? said Aunt Al. No. Well, we used to say that a girl who gets into scrapes like a boy is a tomboy. Your cat gets into scrapes, doesn't she? Yes. Well then. One of the reasons why Sophie and Aunt Al got on so well was that they were both direct, no-nonsense people. They did what had to be done and said what had to be said, and that was the end of it. OK, said Sophie. Thanks. See you. Sometime in the summer, I hope, said Aunt Al, and rang off. At tea time, Sophie said. My cat's got her new name. What is it? chorused the twins. Tomboy. What? they said. That's even worse than plain Tom. Don't we teach you anything in your class, says Sophie scornfully. You're ignorant, that's what you are. Don't you mean ignorant, said her father. That too, said Sophie. And there she is, looking a bit cross with her two brothers. I think they must be eating sausage and mash by the looks of things. But Sophie said her mother. Do you know what tomboy means? Of course I do, said Sophie. A tomboy is a girl who gets into scrapes like a boy. Can I get down, please? Yes, yeah, said her mother, if you finished. Where are you off to? To feed tomboy, said Sophie. And to find names for my four kittens. And off she plodded. Sophie, though small, was very determined, as we know. And a worrying thought crossed her mother's mind. I do hope, she said, she doesn't think she can keep those kittens. One thing's for certain, said Sophie's father. She can't. As soon as they're old enough, we must find them homes. One cat's enough, let alone five. <clears throat> Up in the attic, Sophie addressed the kittens. Her firm ambition in life was to be a farmer. And she knew well that farmers were always looking to increase their flocks and herds. Now, my dear, she said. Let's hope that you're all girls. Then, once you're big enough, you can have babies too. Suppose each of you has four. That will be, let's see, and Sophie began to count upon her fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. And that's the end of the chapter. We'll have to wait and see if Sophie can keep any of the kittens. There she is playing with them at the end of the chapter. She's a very happy girl. And Grandma will say goodnight and see you another day when we'll be finding out about life down on the farm. Probably know a lot about that already, don't you? But that's the next chapter in the book. See you then.